Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton this morning from the Gettysburg Battlefield. This is day number five of our Battlefield Prayer Tour. I want to read from the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 9. The Bible says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Lincoln had a short sermon that he preached occasionally to his children. He'd say, Don't drink, don't smoke. Don't chew, don't swear, don't gamble, don't lie, don't cheat. Love your fellow men as well as God. Love truth, love virtue, and be happy. Character and virtue in America today are in short supply. Simple biblical virtues like honesty, integrity, and justice are fading, in the, fading away in the light of humanistic philosophies postmodern philosophies based on situational ethics. So many gray areas of morality have been manufactured by unenlightened thinking that our youth are having difficulty discerning between truth and error. And let me stop right there and say that that's why the contemporary Christian music industry is so important to our young people because they're listening to that style of music and we need to give them something that's filled with Jesus and that's a very important thing because it helps them to shape a biblical perspective and a biblical worldview in their time and it's desperately needed. Our nation needs to get back to the basics of the Bible and the Ten Commandments. Lincoln taught his children moral principles of virtue. He wisely warned them against the vices that so often enslave a society. The basics in our day include paying bills on time, not cheating on income taxes, denying ourselves the use of alcohol and substance abuse, and a host of other vices. Our Lord has given parents the responsibility of training children in the virtues and morals taught in the Bible. And that includes also just common politeness. Hallelujah. Y'all need to teach your kids to say please and thank you. Y'all need to teach your kids to be respectful toward their elders. Amen. That's a Christian parent's responsibility. When the parent begins to take seriously their role as a spiritual leader, we'll begin to see a difference in the attitude of our youth. Dr. Lee Roberson, former pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, said, everything rises and falls on leadership. We can make a difference in our children's life, but it will take discipline and it will take work. And see, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in 2012 and beyond, Work is not a dirty word where the gospel is concerned. So let me encourage you today. Live a virtuous life and teach a virtuous life to your children and your children's children and your children's children, children. And God will reward you for being an instrument of revival. You see, there's many people I know that they want to have this big ministry. Start with the children. Start with the organization of your own life. Start with the organization of your own home. And God will move you next into your circle of friends. And then he will promote you in your local church. And then maybe he will send you out to your state. And then maybe your nation. And then perhaps the entire world. See, God works in progression, and it all starts, beloved, in the home. This is Brother Paxton at the Gettysburg Battlefield saying we love you in Jesus, and we're going to see you just a little further on up the road in his mighty name. This is one of my favorite verses of Scripture, and we're here at the Gettysburg Battlefield, and I wanted to read Acts chapter 20, verse 24. It says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Amen. So 
This is how when we face opposition in the ministry, when we face uh, people who are withholding their giving, when we face all these strange ideas that are coming up in ministry out there, uh, we can hold our head high, we can not get discouraged, we can press forward, we can move at a swift pace in Jesus because we know that the only reason we're here, we're not here to have a life of self-aggrandizement. We're not here to live lives of fortune and fame. I'm not here to get my name in a history book somewhere. Hallelujah. Men might do that, and that's okay, but I'm here to testify to the whole world, to all of mankind, wherever I go and however I can reach them. I'm here to testify of the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God that sent Jesus to the cross to be the Savior of the world, and it saved my soul, and that's the reason for the hope that is within me, and that's my purpose each and every day. I don't count my life worth anything at all to me because I'm an eternal being. And if I fall asleep here, I'm gonna wake up in my new tomorrow. Praise God. It removes fear. It removes trepidation. And it should send us forth, beloved, as ambassadors of grace in the United States of America. God bless you is my prayer for you. We've still got two, three more days here at Gettysburg yet, and then Angie and I are going on down to Chancellorsville, Virginia, and we'll see you a little further on up the road. God bless you.